So while it traditionally probably wouldn't fall under binary, in the computer science course that I teach, we learn how to calculate file sizes within our unit on binary. So we would typically look at how you would calculate the file size of an image uh, and also how you would calculate the file size of a sound. So let's have a look at our formula for figuring out the file size of an image. So our basic formula, first of all, is that we need to multiply the width in pixels by the height in pixels to figure out how many pixels there are all up. Once we know how many pixels there are in the file, uh, we then figure out how many bits per pixel. So how many bits of information are required to store each pixel. And then we multiply by that by the number of pixels and that will tell us how many bits are required all up. Then we take the number of bits and we divide it by 8 to figure out how many bytes there are in that file. Then we divide the number of bytes by 1024 to figure out how many kilobytes. Now if we wanted to keep going further, uh, so if that was a really large number then we might divide by 1024 again to figure out how many megabytes and 1020 divide by another 1024 to get gigabytes. So it depends on how many bits you start with as to as to how many levels of division you would go. So let's start off with a basic picture. Now I've started with a photo of my gorgeous little puppy dog. Now let's assume, now these are probably not the correct numbers, but let's assume that it was 800 pixels wide and 800 pixels high. So 800 times 800 equals 640,000 pixels in the picture. We then need to look at how many bits of information are required for each individual pixel. And it depends on what information we're told as to how we're going to figure this out. So let's look at the different representations. Now if we were told that it used 16 colors, so we're either told how many bit information it is or how many colors. Now if we are told colors, we need to figure out how many bits are required to produce that many colors. This is where we would look at our binary scale again and we know that we've got one, so I'm putting this down at the bottom, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and so on. Um, one is actually two to the zero, two is two to the one, we've got two to the two, two to the three, two to the four. This is the easy way of figuring it out by the way. To produce sixteen colors we actually need four bits. Now you might say, well, hang on, there are four there. But actually, 16 combinations, uh, using four bits, we can represent the numbers from 0 through to 15. And that is actually 16 combinations. But the cheats way of seeing it is actually looking at the exponent of the next one along. So a little cheat there for you. So 16 colors would use four bits of information. We might, for the same token, have been told that it was 16-bit color and then it would be 16 bits per pixel where 16 colors would have been 4 bits per pixel. So if you're given colors then you need to look at your binary scale to figure out how many bits are needed to represent that many colors but if you are told 16 bit or 24 bit if the word bit is in there then you've already got the number that you need to multiply straight away. So I think that true color um, or 16 million colors, which you would probably be using for a photo, is actually 24 bit. So we're going to use that in our calculation. So as we already know, the picture was 640 pixels because it was 800 wide and 800 high. Now I've just said that we're going to use 16 million colors, so that is 24 bit color. So we multiply that by 24 bits. 
This gives us a result of 15,360,000 bits of information for the whole file. But on the computer, we don't typically represent our files by bits. We would then break it down to, um, to bytes or megabytes or whatever. So we'll divide it by 8. That gives us 1,920,000 bytes. But again, that's a very big number. So we might go down another step and divide by 1,024. And that will give us 1,875 kilobytes. And let's go one more. We'll go, we'll put it into megabytes. And we'll divide by 1,024 again. And we get 1.83 megabytes. So my little image Assuming that was 800 by 800 and it used 24 bits of information per pixel would be a file of size 1.83 megabytes. So the summary is for a file, for an image file, we have the width times it by the height times it by the bits per pixel. And that will give us the size of an image file. Let's have a look at what the formula is for a sound file. Okay, so we're looking at sounds. Now sounds will typically have a time for the clip. We would also have the sample rate. And I'm not super familiar with audio, so I'm going to put the last one as audio quality. So how many bits of information are used to store each little sample? So let's say that we had a sound file and it was one minute of audio. And it was sampled at 16 kilohertz. And it was using 16 bit audio. Now, as I said, I'm not super familiar with audio, so I might be using um, values that are not really that practical. Uh, but let's just run with that. So one minute, let's break that down into seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. And kilohertz, we actually want that in hertz. So kilo means thousand. And so times it by a thousand, we end up with 16,000 hertz. So that's 60 seconds, 16,000 hertz, and it is still just 16-bit audio. And multiplying this out will give us a value in bits. So let's have a look what it's equal to. By my calculations, this comes to 15,360,000 bits of information. And I would run along the same theme of what we did with the... Um, with the image files and I would change the representation. I'd probably go down to kilobytes or megabytes. So we'll divide that by eight. We get 1,920,000 bytes of information. Let's divide that by 1,024. Now I'm just gonna move my screen up. So once we've divided that by 1,024, we get 1,875 kilobytes. Uh, again, let's go all the way to megabytes, divided by 1024 again, we're going to get 1.83 megabytes. Now, freakishly, that's been the exact same file size as our image. Um, but obviously, if you were to give it different values, you'd get a different, different, uh, different result. So hopefully, if you can follow those two formulas, uh, you'll be able to calculate file sizes for all your tasks. Good work.